bit more theory here. Most SQL injections will involve dynamic SQL. What we're going to do is persuade the database to run code that the developer never intended it to run. That means we're going to run code that is not compiled into your PL SQL program units. DDLs are often a requirement. If you need to truncate a table, you can't do that with static SQL. In PL SQL, it's simply not allowed. That will be a case where you have to use dynamic SQL. So static SQL is known to the compiler. Dynamic SQL is not. Now, dynamic SQL, you need, we'll briefly look at how it works, what you can do with it, just with a couple of simple examples. And this will also show us what we need to do to catch when it's being used. What I'll be highlighting at the end of the session is you must have code reviews. You must scan your code for all occurrences of dynamic SQL. You need to look for certain structures. So a simple example, I'll just enable server output and create a couple of variables. Variable B1 number, variable var B2 number, and I'm setting B1 to 7934. So I've got my two bind variables there. Then a simple example, a dynamic simple SQL, about as simple as you can get, is this. Begin. Execute immediate. And there's my SQL statement. Select cell from emp where emp no equals. And here I'm using a bind variable, colon one, and that will be expanded into the first bind variable listed here. Right. So simple example of dynamic SQL, and we find that, and now I can print B2, and we find salary 1300 is the first employee in the table. That's a simple example of dynamic SQL. That statement is just a string of text when the code is compiled. Now, this is an anonymous PL SQL, but if this were packaged to PL SQL, the PL SQL parser would come compiler would not parse that statement. It's just a string. Only at runtime is the string actually parsed. The SQL is not known at compile time. Cursors, that's another case. Cursors can be created with a dynamic SQL. You need to watch for structures such as this. Create a replace procedure, dynamic cursor. And it takes a parameter called vCell. Within the procedure, I'm creating a cursor, C1. And there's the statement, open C1 for, select ename from AMP, where sal greater than whatever was put in there. This is dynamic SQL. That statement that's being constructed is not known to the compiler when I do this. I compiled it. PL SQL doesn't know what that's going to be. Right. And then at runtime, it will find out. For example, I could execute. So what I'm going to do is find how many employees have salary greater than, say, 3,000. Who's got salary over 3,000? Scott King and Ford. Who's got a salary over 4,000? Only Mr. King. So the compiler didn't know what that was. The statement was constructed at runtime. And that's the second structure you've got to watch for to identify dynamic SQL in your code. The third one, I'm not going to demonstrate, so that would take a bit too long, but using DBMS SQL, that has explicit procedures for opening a cursor, parsing a statement within it, binding any variables, execute and fetch of the statement. So you have to watch for use of that package as well. So that's what dynamic SQL is. It's code within your PL SQL that is only, in effect, generated at runtime. And that's the basis of the hacks I'm going to go through now. 